We're going to get through some headlines today. Um, today, <laughs> ironically, um, today was sentencing day. Today was sentencing day. It's a big day for a lot of people. There was a lot of people like sentencing. I don't know if it was something in the courts where they're like, bring them all in. We're sentencing everybody from that end of the country to that end of the country. Everybody's getting a sentence. Um, <clears throat> that's what it was today. And um, the first person we're going to start off with is drum roll, please, everybody. Pat your table. Pat your table. This guy. Robert Kelly. Today was sentencing day. My phone, my email, everything was blown up. You all thought I was going to do a story. Hello? I mean, maybe there will be. I don't know. You got to sit tight. But um, he was sentenced today, um, 20 years for child sex crimes. He's going to serve most of his sentence in federal prison. Um, now, remember, he was serving another sentence for 30 years, right? You all know that this is not a natural story that I could just mouth off on my own, um, but I'm relying heavily, heavily, heavily on my notes. So if I miss something, you can go and Google it yourself, okay? Okay. <laughs> um, but today he was sentenced to 20 years for the child sex crime. He was convicted uh, for six out of 13 charges. Six out of 13 char charges and... Um, his sentencing will be concurrent. So he's going to serve it at the same time. So basically in what I'm thinking, he going to be there forever. That's what it sounds like. Unless I think they can, they do an appeal, right? They're going to do an appeal or at least he's probably going to try to, I'm going to assume because that's what everybody tries to do, right? They're going to do this appeal and see if they can do less. Mm, I don't know. This is this is a lot. But uh, let me see. Let me see what my notes say here. The time will be served at the same time as his 30 year sentence. Remember, he was sentenced in Brooklyn. Sidebar and fun fact. Can I even use that word while delivering the story? I know the lawyer that represented him in Brooklyn, and I was actually going to get that lawyer on the show. Uh, if you're interested in hearing what that lawyer has to say. Uh, put put a put a put a one in the chat, and um, I could definitely secure him. Now he is a very powerful lawyer, and um, his schedule is all over the place. But I'm fortunate enough to actually know him in real life, like I've known him my whole life, kind of thing. So um, to help me out here, I will get him, get that lawyer from the New York case on here. I think that would be fun. I don't know what fun could be is the most appropriate word to use in in this scenario but i think that that would be something uh fruitful um so yeah so so that's that um you know i don't i don't have anything else to say i did cover uh, a couple of other stories if you're new if you're new to me if i am new to your ecosystem if you're interested if you're interested in hearing some of the conversations that we had we had with r kelly when i say we my executive producer uh got a phone call from robert and uh i aired the story so if you're interested in seeing that you can go to my youtube page and um you can catch yourself up on uh some of that conversation and hear what he had to say about uh just different uh, parts of 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 his case and and how he feels and what life is like for him in in prison um up to that point and so on and so forth and uh we'll always keep you updated on you know whatever we have going on um should he call and it's it's of substance for us to put out there but that's all i have to say uh sentencing day was handed to him and it looks like he's going to be doing a total of 50 years does that is is that how i understand is that how i'm supposed to understand it so if he was served 30 years in 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 brooklyn and now they sentence him to 20 years over here in chicago does that mean he has to do 50 years or so if something is running concurrent at the same time, does it mean that because he's running 30 years and they sentence him to 20 years, it's just going to be don't don't judge me if I sound ridiculous. I just really want to understand and know. So if it's going to be a total of 50 years from what I'm seeing, OK. And Rob is 56. What is 50 plus 56? That's 106, yeah? Damn. Mm. 
he'll be 80 when he gets out. 31 total. 29. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Okay, so he's so really it's just do you know the media really makes this thing seem nuts? So it it makes it seem like we're gonna add okay, so concurrent no Natasha. That's what the word concurrent means, means at the same time. So the 30 years, oh, okay. So that, okay, sorry. I had to have a conversation with myself. Okay. So he'll do 31. Okay. Yeah, I'm sorry. I just had to have a conversation. You know, it made sense after, you know. Okay. All right. All right. Thank you, everybody, for having my back for that. Okay, cool. Well, listen, um, yeah, he's 56. He's 56. So 30 years, he'll be, he'll be 80 something. Jeez. All right. Well, whatever whatever we have uh that's that's uh that's cause for an update, you know, we'll definitely update you that uh with that. Um someone else received a sentence. <laughs> this guy. <laughs> okay, first. First of all. <clears throat> oh, the, Harvey Weinstein. The fact that he knows how to play up the camera with the walker and the ailments and he si- and then I don't know if you guys have been following along with his trial, but some of the most disgusting cannot unhear testimonies. I don't know. Like, OK, first of all, Governor Newsom's wife, was it Governor Newsom's wife who went on the stand and said that she was allegedly victimized by Harvey Weinstein. And she explained how his dingling looks. And she said it looked like death. <laughs> she, I, I don't remember if she said it looked like, like dead fish. One person said it was like broken. Like how is the, how is the penis broken? One person said it smelled bad. <laughs> when I tell y'all, I'm a fr- oof. I didn't want to hear any. It was so nasty. One person said it was like it. It, it was the nastiest penis they'd ever seen. They were repulsed by it. But you, but you, but you did things with that. Like I'm. When I tell you this case has thrown me for the craziest loop, I was I would tell my girlfriend, I was like, don't tell me anymore, please. Because she was she she'll update me for the sake of the show. I'd be like, girl, no, I can I cannot. <laughs> I cannot. <laughs> I cannot. So anyway, uh Harvey Weinstein, he um he was sentenced to sixteen years for sexual assault charges. Um, he was convicted uh, three out of seven charges. And, you know, the Me Too movement was surrounded by his, like the Me Too movement started because of him. Can you? And so he. <laughs> he was sitting in court talking about he doesn't deserve to be put in jail. People lying, this that, and a third. And, you know, he he's big director in Hollywood. He was coercing women to come back to his office, hotel room, things like that. And promising them roles. He was using his power to, you know, get whatever he needed out of them. The man held women's career hostage. Listen, I'm not blaming anyone in any of these situations at all. I want to add, I just want to say something. Let me let me let me take this man off the screen cuz when I tell you he is repulsive, boy. <clears throat> I just want to say this. And this is just a message to anybody in here, any anyone who has younger aged um whomever you're responsible for, big brother, children, so on and so forth. One thing that I really from a young young age I always knew to speak up and I always knew what made sense. Have I, was I ever propositioned? Yes. Of course I have. Of course I was propositioned. I was prop girl. If we do this, you have this, but well, I was like, keep it. I don't want, I'm good. 
I've never told those stories because there's nothing to tell because I never did anything to degrade me. I am important to me. Okay. And when I hear the stories that came out of the Harvey Weinstein case and the Bill Cosby case of these women who were promised the sun, the moon, the stars, and a career in Hollywood, it makes me really, really sad to know that these women, these individuals did not have the strong enough village around them to really instill and teach them, don't you ever lower your standards to accelerate your life. Am I, am I like, am I reaching somebody here? Put a one in the chat or something. Like, am I, like, am I making sense? And so watching these trials and cases, it disgusted me to hear the stories. And of course, like everybody in here, whether you're watching me live or you're watching me on the replay, everybody sat and listened and watched and read with utter disgust. You probably had questions. You probably felt like, you knew what you was doing. You knew when you were snorting the coke. You, you know what I'm saying? Like, trust me, I, I went through the whole emotional phase of what do you mean? You know, everybody was doing coke in the 70s and 80s. Like you knew what you, you knew that when you went to that mansion party and you went behind the door of the door of the cellar downstairs and around the corner, what was going to go on? But I had to really reel it in. Because I know how I, I know my village and how I was raised, right? So much that those parties, I was like, oh, man, I'm good. I knew when I was showing up to things, what was going to happen. So I never was shocked when I saw a mirror table. Hello? Y'all know what I'm talking about? I was never shocked when I saw somebody bent over snorting lines. It was it, the, the shock was, oh, my God, that's real. But, you know, when you get a phone call to go to certain places, what's going to happen? So when you say, yes, I want to go, you already are consenting to be not only there, but to partake. If you're not interested in partaking, don't go. Don't go. I wasn't interested in partaking, but the people that I was with, they were the connection to don't mess with her. So, uh, I'm so glad I have my own platform because, baby, I'm going to talk to y'all. These situations are sad to me because it lets me know that not everyone Everyone doesn't have that same advantage. Everyone does not have that same advantage of a village. So it makes me grateful to know that I was brought up with so much, not just faith, but just strong individuals to teach me to understand what I mean to myself, what my self-worth self is, what my value is. I don't need shortcuts to life. You don't need anyone to dangle shiny things to get to the next level. Life is not a video game. This is not a video game. You don't need a one up. Do the work. Get your hands dirty. Figure it out. Go to school. I ain't go to school. That's one thing I was like, y'all could kick rocks. I'm going, to, I'm going straight to the radio. <laughs> That's one thing I ain't do. But my point is, you get my point. And one thing my stepfather used to tell me, you go in that room, don't call me. You go in that room, you go down those alleys, you go hang out with those people, don't call me, and don't call your uncles. So trust and believe, when I did go down those alleys and when I did go in those rooms, I was like, I can't call my daddy. <laughs> I can't call my daddy. So I got to go with somebody. That... But 
I've never, ever been in a situation where I felt like I needed to do anything to accelerate. Or, excuse me, I have been propositioned, but I never did it because I never felt like I needed to accelerate my life faster than normal while I go and sleep with the man over there or snort the coke or do something radical and then there's an unlock unlocking i never wanted that i always wanted to know my journey i always wanted to know okay i am responsible for this and because i'm responsible for this this is supposed to happen or going to happen this always so anyway not too too much on that i'm done with that but it i feel bad for these women when i hear them sitting up there testifying you know it's it's quite disgusting um what's happening here hold on one second oh because of that okay okay um because now these women these women are you know they're in their 40s 50s 60s you know when it comes to the bill cosby case some of these women with the harvey weinstein case they're younger than you know young i mean they're the, the ages vary and some of these women you know have not been able to work their, their self-esteem, their dignity, everything is out the window. And I don't, I don't quite know. Maybe I got to develop my thoughts a little bit differently. But I still feel bad for these women today because it's so many years later. They have to relive their trauma. But then on the other side, I'm like, but what did you expect to happen? And so I feel like today... In every, and this is not just in, this is not just an entertainment industry thing. This is like every industry of power. Like when you have powerful individuals who, you know, hey, you do this and you do that, you'll move up in management. You'll move up in this. I'll give you the corner office. I'll give you, you know, a bonus and all that stuff. You know what I'm saying? So what, like, what do we do? What do we do as a society? Right? Like, what do we do? Like, we obviously talk to, we talk to the individuals around us. This is not like a talk to the youth thing. This is a bigger conversation to talk to because you've got adults who are still dense in the brain that's still carrying out with, with this. Like, and, and, you know, obviously we're talking about high, uh, 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 Harvey Weinstein, but there's women who abuse their power, too. I don't think there's enough conversation around the women who, too, abuse their power. I think there should be a big conversation in totality on that. Do you know what I'm saying? Because someone told me, a woman... A woman told me a story about her boss who was a woman who used to gift her and wine and dine her down to the pantyhose. And when she didn't do what she said to do, it was like hell on earth until she submitted and did the things. So there needs to be like... I don't know. I got to think about it. I want I want to I want to develop this conversation a little bit better. But I really feel like, yes, we have to talk to our children. We have to talk to the youth as they are entering the workspace. I don't care if they're interning at, you know, wherever or they're working at the grocery store bagging stuff. Those conversations. This is what this is why programs in school today are are necessary today now more than ever. The fact that the educational system is so shitty in America and we have taken out all of a lot of fundamental programming in our schools just shows us that we're doomed for just a mess involving even stuff like this. Remember home ec? Do you? What? I think home ec might have stopped in my generation. Honestly, it's hot. I think home ec actually might have stopped in my generation. I'm not even gonna hold you, but I'll never forget having these conversations with the extra extracurricular teachers and having mentorship in the schools and things like that. On top of the village that I have had at home, but but 
there's some children who do not have a village because mom and dad are working families are broken up so there's no more two-parent household anymore you know grandmas are 30 years old today no shade but grandmas are younger and younger like remember when grandmas and aunties and the neighbors and everything helped they were a helping hand i'm talking in a positive way everybody kind of helped nowadays everybody is twerking in the club so who's raising the kids do you know what i'm saying and then we don't have the programs in the school so now when these kids go and they graduate and they go off and do other things they don't have the wherewithal to understand how to function in the workplace. Everybody is about getting the bag, securing the bag, getting the bag. So if you're over there working for a little, you know, $17 an hour, $20 an hour, or some places that, what is it, $10 an hour, something like that, and, and, the, and the man or the woman in the corner office says, hey, you come over here and you do a little thing. You can, you can be a manager and I can put you on salary and things like that. Now, we're, you know, every... This is such a bigger conversation, and the more and more I, I talk about things, the more I'm realizing that we are really a like we were lost before, but I think it's it, we're we're missing we're getting further and further and further away from teaching people the fundamental values of life and and self worth. How do you say that with self? Why do I keep saying self? Self worth. And dignity. Nobody, ha nobody has dignity anymore. Everybody is shaking their ass on the internet for a couple of bucks. Everybody is shaking their ass at work for a couple of more dollars. Everybody wants to drive around in the fanciest car, have the fanciest hair weaves. Even the men are slutting themselves out to women. Everybody is slutting and smutting themselves out today. So I think these cases, like... The Harvey Weinsteins and all that stuff, because that's who we were talking about. They're going to become more and more and more prevalent as we like. This is like, I mean, he's old and the cases are old, but trust and believe. And eggs are expensive and gas is expensive. Cars are expensive. Rent is high. People cannot survive today. People are getting desperate. Shit. Do you understand what I'm saying? So what do you think the big boy the big the big boys and the big girls in the in the corner office upstairs are saying? They're looking at everybody desperate downstairs, like, I'm gonna pick him, her, her. And they're just gonna present all the shiny things. Hey, do this, do that, and I'll make sure you have eggs and milk in your fridge and and, and gas up your car. New form of prostitution. Yes! Okay, all right, we're done. We're done. We're done with that. That wasn't, I didn't even mean to go that far. Okay, let me come back out the rabbit hole. I'm gonna come back out the rabbit hole. Okay, I'm out the rabbit hole. Okay, I'm back. Okay, hi. So we're back to sentencing day. So we, we sentenced, so Robert Kelly was sentenced today. Harvey Weinstein was sentenced today. Um, this guy, his sentencing day wasn't today, but this guy. <laughs> Let me gather myself. So, hold on. This guy, his name is Eric Holder. I'm trying to find something because... <laughs> so, this is the guy... <laughs> Natasha, Natasha, stop. Okay, just stop. So the guy on the screen right now, his name is Eric Holder. Um, he's the jackass that murdered Nipsey Hussle in cold blood. The reason he looks like this is because he was beat up in jail. Um, I'm trying to find the article because um, 
I was way, I, I was out of control. And when I was doing these stories with my back office guy, I could not. He was like, woman, send me the damn photos. And I sent it to him and he himself lost control. And we just, both of us, both of us lost control. It just, so, um, but he was sentenced to 60 years to life in prison for killing Nipsey Hussle. Good. He's 33 years old. Um, the reason he looks like this is because, um, so back, let me tell you, this was in 2022 when the inmates beat him up. So he was attacked. Okay, I'm going to read it straight to you from the New York Post. Eric Holder was attacked by two inmates after he was transported back to the facility after he left court around 4 p.m. that particular day. Um, okay, so he required medical treatment for his injuries and he was cut to the back of the head. I was contemplating if I was going to, um, if I was going to show you the photo, but I'm like, that's way too gruesome. You guys don't care about his head being bloody and he has like six stitches, you know, staples, not even stitches, just staples to hold his head together. But they beat the brakes off of his head. <laughs> they beat the brakes off of him, okay? So um, his face is swollen, his eye is swollen. That's what his public defender uh, said. But they beat him up. When Look, look at that. Look at that. Oh, boy. You done killed L.A.'s hero. Mm-hmm. It said it's not clear exactly where the accused killer was attacked. Uh, what do you mean? What what kind of bozo wrote this New York Post? Who, who is the writer of this article? Patrick Riley. Patrick, I'm going to need you to get it together. Patrick Riley. The way you wrote this article was really d- duncey. But, you know, the New York Post is known for just duncey foolishness. But nonetheless, we're going to get through this. Um, it's it, it, The guy writes it's not clear where he was attacked. Dummy, it's in the photo. They bust his head open and beat up his face. You could have written that differently. Okay, Natasha, chill. Just get back to the story, okay? Um, Holder, this guy, has been ordered to be kept separately from other inmates when he's being transported. And then, um, okay, but because this was last year, they were saying, oh, he allegedly, blah, 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 blah. So they are saying that the reason why this guy killed Nipsey Hussle is because um, Nipsey apparently said that this guy was a snitch and they used to roll together in like the same uh gang of some sort back in the day or whatever and so you know tasha what did they do to him they beat the they beat the brain matter out of (laughs) they beat the brain matter out of him that's what they did to him this was so this particular photo was from last year when he was sentenced so okay so his sentencing for for uh nipsey is 60 to life right but then he was sentenced to like 10 years for because i think when he killed nipsey he shot a couple of other people and then they charged him with having the gun or whatever i don't really understand the justice system when it comes to certain things like there's a breakdown okay he had a gun that wasn't red who gives a shit if you kill somebody i don't care if the gun was registered i don't care about none of that you don't kill somebody lock you up what is the um what is the what hold on a second i'm hot Oh, my God. Shout out to everybody that was able to buy this fan. You all told me I gave you all the link who asked and you all said it was sold out. You all went and and a couple of you got it. And and the rest of you said it was sold out by the time you got a chance to get it. So we could try again. If you guys are interested in this fan, I could definitely send you a link. It is like a savior. It's quiet. It illuminates all types of different colors and stuff like that. So for those of you who work in the office space and like your desk to be all pretty and fancy and all that stuff. And there's different speeds, but I'm not getting paid for that. I just want to let you know because this fan is a godsend and it's so good. But anyway, back to the story. My thing with the justice, um, somebody said injustice system. Exactly. Like, I don't care that your gun wasn't registered and now we're going to add five years on. What is, who was it back, back over there overseas? Is it Confucius or something like eye for an eye? Can somebody, can somebody remind me? History was not my strong point. And you know, I tell you to tell you the truth. I don't pretend like I know everything. I don't. I don't. What is it? Who who was it? Was it like Confucius or um that was the only part of history that I really liked. I've had enough of lumpy dumpy face. Okay, I'll take him off. I'll take him off. Who who was it? 
But y'all know what I'm talking about. An eye for an eye. Coco Lady said the Bible. Well, give me the quote. <laughs> Run it to me or something. I don't know. But y'all know what I'm talking about. Like, because I don't want to hear anything else. Because my thing is, is that, okay, here's, here's, my, here's my thought process. Jump with me here. I'm thinking the way the way we're looking people are living longer today right so you giving this man 60 years right he's 33 today so what's 60 plus 33 everybody let's do it together six seven eight nine that's 93 years so the possibility of him getting out of prison at the age of 93 Excuse me. Just act normal. The possibility of him getting out of prison at the age of 93 and being a jackass at 93 years old and shooting up somebody else and people are living longer. So 93, y'all see some... Look at Ronald Isley. He's 90. Baby, he can get us still. Hello? <laughs> Let me put it I'm just I'm just trying to give y'all context with the way medicine with the way you know what I'm saying Kaya said and with that see I can't I can't see not living longer I just, I don't know I feel like pe- I don't know why I feel like people are living longer I don't know like the these <laughs> these seasons these season vintages they Ronald Isley is like 90 years old he could get it all day so what I'm trying to say I shared a story the other day if a of a woman celebrating her 106th birthday so see that's my point so if he gets out at the age of 93, so Stephen just said somebody, a woman celebrated her birthday at 106. Okay, so 93, 94, 95, 96, 97, 98, 99, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Wait, that's an additional 12 years. He could still run up a muck and do something else. So why not just excommunicate killers out of here? Why are we spending tax dollars to spare the life of a killer? Ron Isley is 81. That thing looks like it's still things. Everybody was like, really, Tosh, 90? 80, 90? Listen, do you know I was talking to a friend? I don't know if he's going to want me to say his name. And he was like, he was like, it's all downhill. (laughs) Mind you, homeboy is 54. Looking like a snack, a meal, and everything. <sighs> Hello? And he didn't talk about everything is downhill once you hit your 50s. I was like, baby, where? Because you look like you're going uphill. You look better today than what you did in your 30s and 20s and 40s, respectfully. Like, you've always been a decent-looking guy, but pff, you, could, you could get it. Hello? And if you're in the room, say nothing. Baby, these 50-year-olds is looking snatched. <laughs> Sorry, mom. Your son-in-law might be 50-something years old. Cause <laughs> I'm kidding. Uh, I'm not. But I don't know. I think, I think when you murder somebody, you should be murdered. There's no accident in murder. I mean, unless it was like a founded accident. Like, the, we were, you, you know what I'm saying? Like, it has to be something legit. Like, oh, my God. But if you take a gun... And you lift up the gun and you shoot somebody. What, like, can somebody help me understand? This is why we need a criminal lawyer in the building. Because I'm going to run circles around it. Because I'm, the questions I'm going to ask, because I'm just going to be like, why, like, what type of, like, why are you even defending this bull, bullshit? Right? Like, if, if someone picks up a gun or a knife and intentionally murders somebody, why are we, what is there to talk about? You did it. You did what they said you did. So what? Why? Why do we have to pay for you to be in a cell? 
Can somebody help me understand? Like, is there a lawyer? Is there somebody in here that can help me understand why? Marisa says, put Rick Party into that class of Asian Life Fine Wine. He cute or whatever. <laughs> no, Rick Party does look very, very good. He's a very handsome um, individual. But back to what I was saying. Don't derail me. <laughs> Y'all could go on Rick's page and tell him he's cute. I'm not. <laughs> almost two hundred thousand dollars to keep someone in prison for life what part of the taxes can i just say no is there a part of the taxes where i could just be like no i'm not paying for i'm not paying for jerry the jackass who killed somebody to to stay alive in prison just give them the needle or you know what i'm saying so maybe that's another conversation that we need to have because that does not make sense to me whatsoever you consciously killed somebody kill them off done next okay you stole a pack of snickers from the store you don't need to serve 25 years to life in jail you need to go do community service and think about your stupid actions and why you decided to steal a dollar 75 candy bar so go do community service and talk to other children talk to children and tell them why they don't need to be a retard like you do you know what i'm saying like think with your right brain not the brain that doesn't exist Next, okay. Oh, you kill you killed somebody? Okay, you go to the chair. Hello? I like somebody help me. But anyway, moving on. Now we're gonna go to this person. <laughs> Jeffrey Epstein. <laughs> so Jeffrey Epstein, his list. I'm not sure. Okay, so here's how we went down the rabbit hole with Jeffrey Epstein today. And now I have to pull this other thing up. When I tell you we accidentally went down the rabbit hole with Jeffrey Epstein today. So I was doing the list with my back office guy and getting the pictures and all that stuff. And I don't know who said Jeffrey Epstein first. But... Our conversation went downhill from there. And I went to Googling and searching and I found the list. I found the list. Okay. Excuse me. That probably sounded disgusting. I'm sorry. I thought I had a t tissue on my desk and I don't. Um, anyway, sack normal. So the list. So he's going through the list. The list has one okay hold on hold on because i gotta give you the exact number i found this website hold on let me find back office guy where's his name on my thing okay back office hello okay wait who who's this oh that's me oh i sent that to myself okay that's my telephone number where's his number why how come he's not saved over here okay okay here it is okay focus Okay, hold on, hold on, hold on. Natasha, just get to what you were saying. So here I am going down the rabbit hole, and I really hope that I'm browsing this on the private thing because I don't want them to know. I don't want them to know that I'm looking, okay? So, okay, sh we got to talk low because I don't want the people to find me because I believe in all that crazy stuff. So here's the thing. I found this list, and it's called epsteinsblackbook.com. Okay. And this website has okay, so basically it's it's called Epstein's Black Book dot com. I found it randomly, okay? And it says the digital Epstein's little black book. Jeffrey Epstein's little black book. It is ninety five pages. Let me see if I have enough hold on, let me see if I have enough black ink. Ah! Oh, I just banged my knee. Let me see if I have enough ink to print out 95 pages. Hold on. Oh, I do. My, my printer is acting dumb. So if anybody can help me with my printer after this, if you're a techie person, can you help me troubleshoot my, hold on. Okay. I really, 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 um, Okay, so listen. Are y'all, you guys are spooked out by his photo? Okay, I'll take it down in a second. So listen, I'm going to print out this list. It's 95 pages. 
1,971 names. Okay, let me write that before I forget. 95 pages, 1,971 names. Okay, boom. I'll take his photo down. I'll take his photo down for you guys. Okay, let me let me move it. But just keep his keep it keep his um. Okay, so boom. So check this out. So it says this site contains all the names and info found in Epstein's infamous Little Black Book. The contents are a list of one thousand. 971 names with contact information such as phone numbers and addresses and baby it has geographical location of where these people are okay so wait wait wait, wait. several vips and respected in- individuals are found in the book together with the flight manifest of his private jet The Black Book is an invaluable primary source of Epstein's network available to the public for us, for us to consume. Before Epstein was able to destroy it, his butler at his Palm Beach house provided the FBI with a scanned copy of the Black Book. The book was available to use for Epstein's staff at the residence. So basically, you know, the staff needed to care for the people coming so they needed to know what's what baby so boom i clicked it somebody can somebody can we start to go find me for so i could get a new computer so i could throw this in the pacific ocean i was scared to click it i don't even know i don't even like i don't even know how i found this but i promise you i was just like when I tell you, okay, so boom, when you press enter, I don't need to press enter because I did it already. Some of, look, I wrote it on the, uh, hello, not me showing you. I wrote it on the back of the L- LADWP. I was like, Hoo! because me and the back office guy, I was, I was taking notes for the show and the back office guy, he got so consumed because when I tell you the list and the list is not in alphabetical order, Okay. So you just got to scroll through and like whatever name kind of pops up that you're like, oh, the names that I wrote down that he was telling me that was on the list. So I like, I don't, I don't even know if I, I can't. I wrote the names down thinking like, I'm going to tell you, I'm too scared to tell you the names that's on this list. So if you want to go and see it, you... Cause baby, I still got shit to do. <laughs> I am not going. I'm not going to read the names. So if you want to know the names, you could do the your own due diligence and sit on the toilet and read these names. Cause baby, I was like, I don't know if my phone is that. Don't tell me no one. I said, baby. No, so I to the back office guy. I was like, <laughs> baby, don't say no more. He started laughing. He's like, what you scared? Yeah, no, I'm scared. <laughs> um, let me see if there's anything left in the queue. Because um, we're going to get up on out of here. Oh, this story. Shout out to Debrat. We got an endearing story that we're going to end off with. Shout out to Debrat and her wife, Jessica. They are expecting a baby together. This is their first baby together. Jessica has three children prior and Debrat is pregnant. Um, I know this story has been circulating. Um, so, you know, I might be late to the party and telling you. 
Um, but we just haven't been here. But out of my mouth, I wanted to congratulate to Brad um, and her wife, Jessica. Did you all know my back office guy did not know she was pregnant? I was like, hello, not me breaking news to you. Like, are you living under a rock? He's like, I've been busy. I was like, how busy are you that you ain't know DeBrat is pregnant? Like that is so DeBrat is 48 years old. She's got she is very, very pregnant. She's in her second trimester. And, um, you know, she's been doing her press run with her wife and they've been talking about their um, their journey. And, you know, she had uh you know, they 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 hit some some complications here and there. Um, pregnancy, you know, I feel like that's such a big topic that one day I would like to dedicate, you know, a couple of days just to talk about um, the struggles in in conceiving a child and all of the things that happen when you're pregnant. Like I wasn't educated in pregnancy. Like, I don't know if some of you can relate, like in a West Indian household, even saying pregnancy is like taboo. Like you can't say somebody's pregnant. Like you ain't even supposed to say the word pregnant. I'm like, hello. So, you know, when I went through my own set of complications, um, but I went through complications with, well, I had an ectopic pregnancy. Like I could have died and I didn't even know that. I was like, what? Um, and then after that, when they had to take the baby, I didn't think I would ever get pregnant again. I was like, okay. And I like, Never did, but I also wasn't trying. So that's like something psychological that women go through. If you had an abortion, if you had an um, a miscarriage of any sort, you know, ladies, you know, I don't know who I'm talking to, but put one in the chat if you're comfortable. But if you've ever had to go through any of those measures where they had to suction a baby out of you for whatever reasoning, you know, you feel like, you know. You, you feel like you're a failure, you know, especially when you want to become a mom or, you know, a lot of women go through um, polyps and fi fibroids and all kinds of, of, of um, <sighs> gestational issues. But that's not the word I wanted to use. But um, we I, I just think society in totality does not understand the risk that women take when when they carry a baby all the way to childbirth, like, you know, there's so many statistics that, you know, if, if, if I knew I was going to go down this rabbit hole, I would have had it. But I'm like obsessed with um, I'm obsessed with the childbearing process. I'm obsessed. Like I wanted to be an OBGYN. Fun fact for those of you who didn't know, I really wanted to be an OBGYN. Like I'm obsessed with everything when it comes to baby making, um, not the sex part. I mean, that's fun and everything, but the actual process of what happens when this sperm and egg meet, like what happens, what, like all of that. I'm totally obsessed and enamored with that process till this day. Um, I had, I had two great pregnancies for the most part, but I did incur some complications. Um, and you know, it's the closest you come to death. Yes, Daisy. I am so, so, so glad you said that. When I birthed both of my children and I was trying to explain to their dad, I'm like, cause he was like, what does it feel like? And I'm like, literally when the baby crowns and that means when their head is right at that peak of, of a woman's vagina. So like if this is that area, the threshold, right. And the baby is coming through like, right. So like right here, when the head gets to this part, that's like where it's like crowning and it pushes through, right? Right when it gets to this part, there's something that happens. It's like a euphoric feeling. It's like the passing. Both pregnancies of mine were natural. I, 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 I had a natural labor, thank God. This part... I felt I felt the departure of me. I felt myself come back and I felt me giving life. It is the it, I can't I don't know how else to explain it. It is the most insane feeling and I love it. I really love it. I really really love child the childbearing process, the birthing process. I really, really embraced both of my pregnancies, my both of my full term pregnancies. It was amazing. And when I gave birth to when I gave birth to my first kid, like I was like completely like shocked. This was my first time. Right. But when I gave birth to my second baby, it was it was, a you know, I knew all of the things to expect. I was a lot more comfortable um, and it was quick. 
And I was like, I can't wait to do this again. Unfortunately, I have not been able to do it again. And I don't know if I'll ever be able to have children again because I don't have nobody to have children with. But um, going back to what I was saying, there's so many. It's, it's such a delicate process that people really, I don't think there's a full appreciation and understanding in what women go through to have these babies. Shout out to everybody in here who has gone through a C-section, I cannot speak on it, but just learning about that, it's like our bo- like women re- like we go through a lot to bring these humans into the world. So, I think I'm going to spend a couple of days on that process, but going back to Debrat, you know, she's 48 years old and as we get older, there's a lot more complications that arise um and she went through complications and her and her wife are definitely going around and talking about what they've endured. Now, I, you know, the internet is a very unkind place and a lot of people have their things to say um, in, in, in their shock in the brat being pregnant. I don't care to repeat it because I, as a mother who has birthed two children, I, um, I don't, I don't joke or, or laugh about that process. I don't care if you're 15, 50, 35, like, that is such a, a scary for 40 weeks. It is it is a very delicate time for women. Um, and so shout out to Debrat. The only thing I'm curious about is who the daddy. I just want to like who the, they're keeping that quiet. We don't know who the daddy is. But I want to know y'all think it's Jermaine Dupree. I I don't know. In, in the back of my head, I'm like, because, you know, they're close. Like, I'm like, I wonder. You know, baby come out, talk about so, so deaf. <laughs> but no, seriously, shout out to um, shout out to the brat and her wife, Jessica. Um, that's what I, that's it. That's the show. It's goodbye. That's the show.